What is going on guys, today I have exclusive details on Destiny 2 coming straight from the latest edition of Edge magazine, details on the story, details on 80 plus missions, activities and much much more. But before we go any further guys, I am giving away 5 Rockstar Destiny 2 exclusive in game gear codes. To win one simply leave a thumbs up on this video and comment down below. Ok so there's so much to talk about and cover here, it's just, it's just ridiculous, I will do a couple of videos but this one I want to constantly concentrate on the details of the story and the 80 plus missions and activity quoting edge and what they speak about so we're going to get into it and quoting edge right here destiny 2 story is not only entertaining but also makes actual sense from beginning to end the scene is quickly set the red legion an elite faction of the hulking cabal race has designs on the traveler the looming planet like spear that gives Destiny's Guardians their powers and the ability to regenerate after death. Under leadership of Dominus Ghoul, the Legion assaults the tower, the last remaining city on Earth, and leaves it in tatters. The enemy encases the Traveller in a cage, preventing it from dispensing light, stripping the Guardians of their abilities and sending them running scared to nearby planets and moons. Goal, it transpires, intends to drain the Traveller of its power and use it to his own nefarious ends. Those intentions, in a remarkable change from the frequently baffling Destiny campaign, are clearly explained in an early cutscene that shows a conversation between Gaul and his council, a lifelong friend. Occasionally, characters in the original Destiny story had backstories and motivations. Arix, the final boss in the Taking King's Raid, sought revenge for the Guardian's murder of Crota, his son, in an earlier expansion. But any nuance was either screwed away in the grimoire or simply never explained. Yet within an hour of sitting down with Destiny 2, you understand what the bad guys are doing and why. They seek to build an empire, to reshape society, to lead it. You might actually see their point, even if they've kidnapped one of your most valued allies. Now coming away from Edge for a second, even though they've kidnapped one of your most valued allies. Who are we talking about here? Now the one person who we would call a most valued ally, besides Cade, Savala, Ikora, and a few of the other vendors, I'd probably say the speaker is the one person where there's a mystery surrounding them within Destiny 2. Is this the valued ally they speak about? Are they going to use that against us? I cannot wait to find out. Okay, so getting straight back into it. This was Bunch's key and intention for Ghoul. To have a villain that had motivation, Smith says. Oryx had them too. And it was cool to base it on a player's action in some way. But goals ain't based on what players have done. It's what he wants. His own desires. And the scene is set. While Ghoul works to harvest the Traveller's energy, you must first recover your powers. Then reassemble your troops from their interplanetary hiatus. Before working out how to coordinate an assault on the elite members of a faction of enemies who, as one of Destiny's few memorable lines of dialogue once explained, blow up planets just for getting in their way. And so, once the Red Legion has destroyed the tower, you awake in the European Dead Zone. The largest area Bungie has ever built. With no weapons or powers, you walk slowly with a stagger. You must, if only for a while, play a very different game. A fallen tree provides an essential bridge across a gap that normally you'd sail over without a second thought. A new mantle animation which we'd previously thought had been solely designed to ensure you no longer miss that ledge that's 30 feet off the ground during a firefight. To be honest, I actually thought the same thing too. This explains differently though. This proves vital for getting over low walls and along a mountain trail. As we follow a tight path towards our objective, we experience something never before known in Destiny. A fear of heights. It doesn't last long of course. Soon after you happen across a farm, in time this will become Destiny 2's first social space. Teaming with fellow guardians and vendors dispensing quests and wares. But for now, it's just a small settlement populated by other humans. Some of whom are warriors who've lived there all their lives and have never been blessed by the Traveller's Light. Among them is Shuraya Hawthorne, a handy sniper with a fine line in withering sarcasm. She alerts you to a nearby shard of light that fell from the Traveller during the attack. Others have noticed as well. Of course, but once you've seen them off, you're soon running around with a new set of weapons, able to throw caution to the wind, safe in knowledge that if all goes wrong, you'll simply be brought back to life. We're back, your guardian companion swoons. Let's spread the love. 
From there, it's a matter of getting the band back together. Now, the farm is slowly repopulating with old friends as you flit from planet to planet, rescuing the desperate members of the Vanguard from the far-flung corners of the solar system. It is a time-worn method of storytelling. Sure, at times it feels a little safe, but we'll take safe over nothing any day of the week. Edge go on to state, while we won't spoil too many specifics, the journey itself is a great improvement over the original game. There is a far bigger sense of scale. Vast open areas with wearing factions doing battle beneath majestic bungee skyboxes are a reoccurring theme and it's impossible not to think of the series with which the studio made its name. Especially when you put up the controls of a vehicle or three. Now that's pretty cool. I can't wait to see the new vehicles we get to handle within Destiny 2. They go on to say that it gives us great optimism for the game at large. Boss fights are no longer attritional checks of your damage output and endurance, but tests of skill. The excellent shape-shifting final boss neither relentlessly shells you nor surrounds you with swarms of minions, but does just enough to ensure you're constantly moving, always thinking, forever under threat. His health bar goes down quickly once you land shots on him, but the real battle is creating the opportunity to do so finding gaps between his attacks and his backup troops. Now coming away from this for a second, did you guys hear that? The shape-shifting final boss. The shape-shifting. I cannot wait to see what they are talking about. I seriously can't. Okay, so getting back into it. Destiny's bosses have previously been about phases, not just in terms of the boss attacks, but also the way they dictate your actions. If the campaign is any guide, Destiny 2 shifts the focus away from the designer and onto the player, letting you set the terms of engagement, the flow of a fight, now a question of skill and good decision making. Aside from some occasional gentle level gating forcing us off the critical path we rather stomp our way straight through the campaign one of the most fundamental additions to destiny 2 is an open planet map that shows you exactly where to go to trigger its many activities a squeeze of the left trigger brings up the milestones menu which makes clear the next step in the story as well as highlighting other activities that can be completed for rewards. That it is even required to tell you everything about how many distractions are to be found elsewhere. Public events, spontaneous in world co op challenges that previously had to be happened upon by accident or found using a third party app, are now marked on this map, and some can be called in manually by picking up a flag that refills your super. Elsewhere, adventures are lengthy, fully voiced side missions thick with story that span multiple sections and yield valuable rewards. Lost sectors are signalled by inward graffiti, nudging you towards some monstrous corner of the level that leads to a battle against a mini-boss guarding a crate full of loot. Engage in exploration in a manner the first Destiny never managed. There are meaty world quests too that further flesh out the story, Patrols and strikes, the only PvE activities available in Destiny 1 outside of story missions, don't unlock until the final third of the campaign, and until the notification popped up, we hadn't even noticed their absence. In total, there are over 80 missions and activities in Destiny 2, and each is substantial in length, challenge, story, and reward. Edge go on to state, as we leave reluctantly from Bungie Studios to catch their flight, we took a final look at the map of one of Destiny 2's four worlds. It was absolutely teeming with things left undone. That doesn't sound like Destiny, and indeed, it left Bungie with a difficult and sorely unfamiliar challenge, one that Smith didn't notice until he spent a long holiday weekend playing the game for 60 hours on the studio's private test server. We had more content than we had progression, he says. Executive producer Mike Norville which chimes in. We've turned all the knobs this way and it turns out that at hour 55 you fell off a cliff. It's been fixed of course but anyone who spent dozens of hours running and rerunning the first game's paucity of content night after night for weeks on end will agree that is a beautiful problem for the makers of the new destiny to have to solve. So yeah guys absolutely crazy. Now there's actually more things to cover from this Edge magazine which I will post in videos to come later on today. But this just gets me more and more hyped for the game, it seriously does. I mean 80 plus missions and activities full of story, 
I just could not wait to get onto the game. And Edge state that there were two days at the Bungie studio, but yet checked one map of one world and it was teeming with things left undone. This sounds like a game that takes a true grind, which I cannot wait for. I also love the idea as well that the mantle was put in place to help us when we didn't have our powers and our abilities to scour little things when we were making our way to the farm. That's actually a great addition. But yes guys, stay tuned for more info from this Edge magazine as I will keep you guys updated via videos all through the day to day. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks as always for stopping by. Do hit that like button. I do appreciate the support. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. If you never want to miss a video I upload, hit that bell button next to that subscribe button to receive email notifications of when I do upload. But thanks as always for stopping by and I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand, but you and I will carry on, we never get it right.